Here's a multi-step synthesis that goes through alcohol intermediates and uses a Grignard reagent. We're going to devise a synthetic route to go from methyl butanoate, an ester, to 2-methylpentane-3-ohn, a ketone. Of course, you should always draw your structures. Over here, our parent chain is 3-pentanone and there is a methyl group on carbon 2. That is our product, the 2-methylpentane-3-ohn. And this is our starting material, methyl butanoate, the ester. And the tool that we've learned that we want to use here is retrosynthetic analysis. In other words, if we look at our final product, is there a bond that we see that we know how to make? Sure there is. We could oxidize an alcohol to make a ketone. Right, so we actually have some choices in oxidizing agent there to go from the alcohol to the ketone. We could use Jones reagent or PCC. All of those uh, use chromium-6 ions. So I would use uh, the Desmartin pariodinane or the Swern oxidation to be the greenest option. I'm going to write in the choice are the uh, reagents needed for Swern. And so for Swern, we'll use dimethyl sulfoxide and oxalyl chloride, C2O2Cl2. That takes our secondary alcohol to a ketone in an oxidation. Remember, this is a retrosynthetic arrow, so it's going backwards. So we figured out that the precursor to our final product is a secondary alcohol. And you can make a secondary alcohol by a substitution reaction from an alkyl halide, but your yield is not going to be very good. In fact, it'll be the minor product. Your major product will be the elimination product. So what if we made this um, secondary alcohol by an addition reaction of an alkene. So we could picture doing an addition reaction from these two different alkenes to get to the secondary alcohol. Only one of these choices is synthetically efficient because only one of them gives us control over the regiochemistry. Right? Think about it. The alkene on the right is monosubstituted on each side. So there's no regiochemical control. Doing an addition reaction there, we'd end up putting the hydroxyl group here or here in equal proportions. Whereas if we use the alkene on the left, then we can do an anti-Markovnikov hydration right there. So that's the better choice. And the reagent needed to do that anti-Markovnikov hydration is hydroboration oxidation. And the reagents we use to accomplish this, the hydroboration step is accomplished by using borane and tetrahydrofurane, and the oxidation step, you use hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide. Now, to get the 2-methyl-2-pentene that we just did anti-Markovnikov hydration on, there are actually a couple of different options. We could do a Zaitsev elimination of 3-bromo-2-methyl-pentane using sodium ethoxide. For that matter, we could use 2-bromo-2-methylpentane as well. At this point, it's a matter of considering the relationship between this and your initial compound. If we look at it, this fragment of the molecule, these four carbons, are going to come 
from this. So we've added two methyl groups. And how would we add two methyl groups to an ester? We'd use excess Grignard. So now it's time to start thinking forwards. So if we used our excess methyl magnesium bromide followed by water, we'd end up with this tertiary alcohol, which we could then get to the alkyl bromide by using PBr3. What's really cool is we could even skip a step and go directly to that um, alkene if we did acid catalyzed dehydration, so concentrated sulfuric acid and heat. So now let's write this up forwards. First, let me number all my steps. So one is the excess green yard, two is the water, three is acid catalyzed dehydration, four is hydroboration, five is oxidation. That gives me my anti-Markovnikov hydration product, and six is the oxidation. So that's six steps. Alternatively, we could go make our third step the PBR3 and our fourth step sodium ethoxide, and then hydroboration would be five, oxidation would be six, and the Swern oxidation would be seven. So here's the six step synthesis. One, excess methyl magnesium bromide. Keep in mind you'd have to do that in diethyl ether. Two, water. Three, concentrated sulfuric acid and heat. That gets us our acid catalyzed dehydration. Four, hydroboration. That's BH3.THF, 5 oxidation, H2O2, NaOH. That gets us to our alcohol, and then 6 was our Swern oxidation, uh, DMSO, and oxalyl chloride. Right, so that was 1 possible synthetic route, and that only took us six steps. And then the other route we got was seven steps. The first two were the same, starting with the excess Grignard, methyl magnesium bromide, oops, followed by water, then we use uh, PBR3 to make it into a tertiary alkyl halide, then sodium ethoxide would get us the Zaitsev elimination, that is a tri-substituted um, alkene, then we do hydroboration oxidation, so 5 would be BH3.THF, and 6 would be H2O2 and NaOH. And then 7 would be the Swern oxidation, DMSO and oxalyl chloride. Right now, that's 7 steps. Right? Uh, what alternatives could we use in step three? I can think of one, two, three, uh, four other ways to do it. What four ways could we, what four different routes could we take instead of using PBR3 at that step? I'll give you a hint. What are the other ways we could go from that um, tertiary alcohol to a tertiary alkyl halide? Well, we could use HBr. 
that would give us the same result as PBR3. Or we could use HCl, that would give us a tertiary alkyl chloride. We could do thionyl chloride, SOCl2, and dichloromethane, CH2Cl2. Or we could do tosyl chloride in pyridine. Right? All of those would give us a decent leaving group in the same place. Right? And then you can also think of several other ways to go here. Right? You could use DMP or Jones or PCC. I think our best synthesis was our six-step synthesis that we came up with initially.